Hello guys, this is Nick from HF Survival School. Thank you very much for joining me. So, all of you know that our another member of our channel and our family is Max, my adventure dog. And uh, if you don't know, that means that you are not subscribed, then please subscribe now and click that bell icon to uh, get notified about more awesome videos by the one and only Pancho Man. And today I want to introduce another family member. So, there's Max. Max! Maxi! Here's our boy Max. Our proud father, and here's the little guy, Rocco. Rocco. He's son of Max. Rocco. <laughs> oh, the jealous father just arrived. <laughs> So now enough with chilling in the hammock and taking a rest. Now let's start the fire, make a cup of tea, maybe a spruce tea. And uh, we can talk more about uh, the little guy, about the big guy, about some future video ideas and all of that good stuff. I just realized that I have packed everything what I need, but I have not packed any kind of uh, fire starting option. So I forgot my furrow and the lighter, so <laughs> because I came here in kind of rush. So now I'll try to start a bow drill fire, but I don't know if I will succeed to get an ember because the past two or three days has been heavy rain and it will be quite a challenge to uh, find any kind of dry material. And plus uh, I am limited in tools, I only have a saw and my uh, mora heavy duty with me, so I don't have a hatchet to split down uh, bigger pieces of wood to get to the dry stuff, so it will be quite a challenge. But Let's try and until I am uh, on the look for some materials, here is some footage of the little guy growing up. I think you will enjoy it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video of the little guy rock over there growing up. So while you were watching, I made the bow. Here is the bearing block from green wood, green hardwood. And uh, here is the most down and dirty, ugliest bow drill set you have ever seen. From I made it from spruce. So now I also have this uh, uh, kind of your dream bird's nest with uh, uh, spruce, uh, small dry spruce sticks, then I put some uh, punk wood, then I put some uh, pine pitch to keep up the flames, uh, then I had some uh, feather sticks and then on the edge some scrapings of uh, a, a birch bark. So uh, uh, right, as long as we get the ember, which I highly doubt with this kind of set, but if we get it, I'm sure we will be able to turn it into fire. So now let's burn this in and actually see if it works. Mm -hmm. 
I must say that there are some insane amount of mushrooms because of all of these rains. Like for example, these ones here. And these ones. As you see, all over the place. And these little mushrooms. And this little mushroom. And this mushroom as well. And this mushroom that is not letting me film. I don't know how it's over there, but over here almost all mushrooms which have this kind of uh, thinner leg compared to the head are poisonous and are not edible and only most elders and uh, kind of professional experienced people uh, can identify which kind of mushrooms are uh, edible and which are not. Here is a horseshoe fungus which can be used to start fires. In the middle, in the middle, you have to peel all of this off, and in the middle, it is kind of uh, like almost like punk wood material, uh, but it is a, a little bit more um, harder, and it uh, can uh, hold your uh, ember very good. So in some cases, almost all night, I think. Uh, with my experience, a fungus this size will hold the uh, ember for the whole night. I miss these woods so much. Isn't it very beautiful or what? What's better than being out here? By the way, the spindles were short. It should be like five more centimeters long, but we'll see if it comes out with this. We'll continue and if no, then I will have to make a new one. So as you see, it is burning and also I'm not a uh, kind of bow drill expert, but what I can tell you is that uh, the color of the uh, this bur the color of this burned wood is dark. It is not brown, so that is already a good matter. So now I will make a V notch, and then we can continue ma making actual the fire and. The clouds are coming in and I hope it won't rain because I don't have a raincoat. But don't worry Uncle Nick, you won't melt. The notch is too small and therefore all of the dust is coming out. So we need to make it a, a little bit deeper. The notch goes deeper. I also made it a little bit wide. You need to be careful not to make it too wide or, or else the spindle will come off. So let's try again. It is good time after time to make the point of the spindle a little bit more pointy again. Stupid dog almost ran into the knife. You need to be very careful. As you see, even though the bearing block is green wood, it is still burning and creating a lot of friction on the top of the spindle. Shit. We are very close. We don't have to give up. problem is that I'm hitting the ground because the spindle is so short and all the wet debris 
is getting onto it, which you need to avoid with any cost. And no, that's not me howling. That's Rocco scratching himself and enjoying himself. Okay, I give up. So, you guys know how much I hate giving up and I never give up until the end. Like Rock over here who wants to come up and won't give up. But eventually he will understand that he won't come up. So it is getting quite late. It is like 7 o'clock. It is getting dark in like half hour and I have about one and a half, two hour walk until home and it is very easy to get lost in these woods my phone got out of the charge so I don't have any flashlight with me and I don't want to be walking here in the dark just that I mean I won't get lost but just to avoid any kind of kind of stuff going wrong and maybe stepping my foot on the wrong way because in five days the hunting season is opening and I'll be going hunting and I want to be in good shape by the way one time here's a cool story one time I was on this trail I went up all the way on the mountain and I was with, with my boy Max and we were hunting woodcock we went up I was waiting for the night fly so that they come, of the, come out of the woods to uh, drink water. So we were hunting and on my way back home I knew this road like my five fingers. I also had a flashlight and I once I like looked around I knew exactly where I was and then I continued on the uh, ordinary trail. Okay, come up. Okay, okay, here. <laughs> on the ordinary trail and then at one moment I look around and I realize that I'm lost and then I had to walk like two hours next to the water because I know all of the water sources here are going to the one main source which is, which is next to the uh, big trail from which you really can't get lost and that way I went back home. I mean, I was not really lost, but it was kind of a situation where I didn't knew where I was. And I had to think about it. Don't panic. Realize that all the waters come in one source. And just like that, I went out without any problems. So now I have planned a very few good videos, a few overnights. Uh, one hunting trip now, maybe even two hunting trips, I don't know, we will see. And I hope it will be a good journey. Max over there got his foot hurt the previous time when, when we made the traditional bushcraft overnight video. By the way, if you have not seen that video, please click the card. And he hurt his leg. There was a cut, also was coming out from it, and the doctor had to make a, uh, a few more cuts to take it all out, and now his foot is getting better. And tell me in the comments below, please, what do you think about the new guy, little Rocco? Isn't he very cute and adorable, or what? My future little hunter. <laughs> So, by the way, for, for those of you who are OG HF Survival School subscribers, I think you guys might recognize this place. Here, spoiler alert. Go back and tell me in the comments below which video was it, what it was called, and, or maybe a, a post a link. And the first one who will post it will uh, receive a 20% discount on one of my custom knives. So. If you want to order a custom knife, you might as well go back 
look which video was here and if you will be the first one you will be receiving a 20% discount on my custom knives by the way here is a full tank custom knife I have just made which is actually for sale as you see it has a beautiful wedge 10 leather sheath burnished covered with natural beeswax and as you see it has a basket with decoration belt loop but here is the most important part the knife ain't that beautiful or what it has uh, ebony scales which is if you don't know ebony is black African wood it has 0.5 millimeter brass spacers brass pins and the brass lanyard tool it is all polished to mirror sharp covered with bold linseed oil as you see the spine is also polished and the, this knife was fully made by me I mean when it, I started working with it it was just a piece of metal then I ground it gave it a bevel then I normalized it uh, then I uh, heat treated it then I would temper it and as you see I decided to leave this uh, heat treating marks because this way this knife is really unique and you cannot find any other like this anywhere in the world so if you decide to buy this knife you will help out the channel very much and you will be getting knife of your dream dreams this steel is uh, 80 uh, CRV2 which is uh, same equivalent to uh, 1084 plus high carbon steel so as you see it is a very good steel to work with all of my custom finish uh, oblates are made with that steel and mostly like 90% of uh, carbon uh, steel oblates in Finland are made with that steel so that can tell you a lot as you see there is a lot of the, uh, attention to details and I think that this really is the best bushcraft knife one can buy also if you would like it I, I am able to make a, a custom ferro rod for it that will go, for, go with it it will also have, have uh, ebony scales and breast spacers so it will be a great great bushcraft kit together so if you are interested to buying it you can contact me on any place either here on Facebook or on my Etsy shop or on my Facebook group all of the links will be down in the description so if you are interested you can check it out here's a little close-up so that you can see it is all mirror polished and of course it shaves like butter just like that and why did I do it here now it will look ugly but who cares as long as someone buys this knife because I put a lot of effort in it it was like one month of hard work I have tested it I have batoned through dry uh, walnut across the grain so that is the worst thing you can do to a knife and the edge hold up great I also did the brass rod test where you put the knife with full force against the uh, brass rod and uh, slide it across it so that uh, you can test it for chips uh, the hardness is somewhat between uh, 80 I mean 59 and 60 Rockwell and you just can't go wrong with this knife and especially if you get the matching ferro rod as well it will serve you for a long long time for years to come and it will be your heirloom piece which you can pass down to future generations and the most importantly you will be helping out this channel a lot I think that will be all for today now I will take down and go back home so uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe for more awesome videos and there will, I promise there will be some cool videos coming you will enjoy it very much click that bell icon next to it so that you get notified for more awesome videos 
and thank you very much for watching by the way here is some awesome footage I filmed from home from my from my apartment uh, a bird eating a thrust